my soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he, for he has looked for, with favor in the lowliness of his servants. Surely, from now on, all generations will call me blessed. Oh, wait, I need to read more. Um, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm, and he has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away to empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Let's sing some Christmas songs.
Let's pass the peace of Christ to one another. We are filled with Christmas. Let's uh, say peace of Christ to every single one. As an act of praise, we'll sing together in the bleak midwinter, and the ushers will be in the aisle receiving offerings. You may be seated. Clark Brame will light the Advent wreath for us. Thank you, Clark. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive reading for Advent. Oh, you got to sing first. <coughs> sing first, then we'll do that. Love is more than a flicker within the human heart. Love, 
In a hurried world with little time for others, Advent calls us to remember that in a world where often we become consumed by our own interest, Advent calls us to remember that love is kind. In a world where we often are quick to anger and slow to forgive, Advent calls us to remember that love is not easily angered, and through love we come to forgive. This Advent, let us behold the love of God embodied in our Savior's birth. This morning we light four candles. The first candle reminds us of the marvelous hope revealed through the Savior's birth. In a time of despair, God shattered the darkness with the hope of a new future. The second candle reminds us of the peace that only Christ can instill in the human heart. The third candle reminds us that our joy abides in God who gently whispers to each human heart, come follow me for I have come that you might have life and have it to the fullest measure. The fourth candle helps us remember that God's perfect love made flesh can fill our hearts, ignite our souls, and change our lives. Gracious Lord, as we continue our Advent journey, we pray that being rooted and established in love, we may have the power to grasp how wide, how long, how high, and how deep is the love of Christ. True love was not only born at Christmas, but revealed for all to see. May we come to know this love in our lives and share it with those around us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, uh, under the leadership of David Breidenbach and Becca Johnson, we have a spontaneous, spontaneous, there were two rehearsals, spontaneous pageant brought to you by the children. Good morning. We're going to tell the story of the birth of Christ child as told in the second chapter of Luke. I'm going to need you all to help me tell the story. I will ask for volunteers to come up and help be a part of the nativity scene. You don't have to say anything or do anything other than come up here. However, for our younger people, if you want to be a sheep, you can baa like a sheep. If, yeah, there you go. If you want to be an angel, you can flap your arms as if they were wings. Think about what part you would like to be as we tell this old, old story. This is a spontaneous story. Well, can't you tell? <laughs> While we often think of this story as part of God's plan, Something that was waiting to happen for a long, long time. We need to remember that the shepherds were not expecting to see angels in the field. And the animals in, in the manger certainly were not expecting to see their space filled with human beings, let alone a baby. And Mary and Joseph certainly were not expecting to have a baby out in the cold. Much of this story happened by surprise to the people and animals who experienced the story. So... As we tell this story, as much as you know this story, imagine it were happening for the first time. Try to think of the spontaneity of the moment, the moment God chose to enter our world and our lives in a new way. 
In those days, a decree went out from the Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinus was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph, who went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. You know, we need some shepherds to step up here and stand around Mary and Joseph. And we could use some sheep. Anyone who wants to be a shepherd or a sheep, come on up. Uh-oh. Sheep, can you buy for us? Sheep, buy. Ba ba ba. Let us hear your baas. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them. And the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But but the angel said to them. You're up. Well done. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host. Angels, we need some angels to be our heavenly host. Yeah, well, we're, we're working on it. Any angels want to come forward? Any other angels? I, I know there's at least one or two of you out there who are angels. Come on. There we go. There we go. <laughs> So, so there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace and goodwill to all. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place which God has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. Here he comes. <laughs> with Ma. That's perfect. Our scene is almost complete. But we need some more animals in the stable. We need some cows and donkeys. And horses up here around the mangers. Any cows or donkeys? Or I guess not. There's something like that out there. Up, oh, up, oh, we got it. Cows moo. When they saw this, they made known what had been told to them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Woo! Yeah. All right. This is the story of our Savior's birth as told by Luke's gospel. This is the good news that today and every day a Savior has come for us. We remember this old, old story and that this story is alive in us for we are the body of Christ. Remember this picture, this spontaneous nativity today, for this story continues to live in us. Amen and Merry, and Merry Christmas.
Now that's spontaneous, I'm telling you. Let us pray. <coughs> Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, bless our church, we humbly pray. Bring please all the ones who need us and some helpers on the way. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day and for all that it brings. We're thankful for this season. Um, we're thankful for, uh, for Christmas and for your son coming into a world that could only be helped by him. And we pray that you send him again and again, that he's always here uh, for a world that continues to need. We're thankful this day for our little ones who were proclaimers of the gift of your son, our savior, this morning. Bless that end to them. Uh, let it be a proclamation that is never far from any one of them. Help them always to know Jesus and to know 
that knowing Jesus' names we're able to have faith and confidence in a world that very much still needs teachings about forgiveness, of love, of peace, and of hope. Be with all those that we've mentioned in this service as needing your healing, your comfort, your encouragement. And help us this day as word is read and proclaimed that we would respond in ways that you would use for the needs of our community right here and for the needs of your entire world. Bless us as we now pray together as your son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning comes from Luke. We're in the first chapter, starting in the 26th verse. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. He came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great. And he will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth in her old age has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who is said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. And then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let us go to God once more in prayer. Heavenly Father, we pray that the things that bind us, our fears, our insecurities, our sense of scarcity, Lord, all the things that pull us from you. Remind us, God, that you can carry it. <coughs> Help us to release it now that we might be present with you in our mind and in our body and in our very being. I invite you to pray for me and with me that may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight that all that we do and say and sing and play and squeal be to the glory of you and you alone, Lord. Amen. <laughs> it was several years ago, I'm not going to tell you how many, I've reached that age, 
Uh, but it was college, and I was driving home with the first love of my life. His name was Daniel, and he had a red truck. And uh, I don't know, you didn't, not as high of standards when you're younger, I don't know. But we were driving home on New Year's Eve. We had gone to a party with, with his mother, and we, were, we left her, we left early, and our plan was that he would drop me at my parents' house before midnight. We would miss the drunk drivers, we would welcome the new year, have our sweet kiss, and be safe. We were driving um, down 288, not a soul in sight. Real proud of ourselves, like how mature are we hitting the road early, you know? And then out runs a deer. Bam. There are moments in life like that. Bam. It all stops. It changes. It could be the moment, the first time you hear your child's heartbeat. It could be a moment where you or a loved one has, has received a diagnosis, and, and that moment <coughs> is seared into your brain. Bam, a collision. Something's changed. I think for Mary, a young woman, the Bible says virgin. The translation is young woman. A young woman has an angel of the Lord come upon her and say, do not be afraid. And that has to be a big bam moment. Here comes the holy but then here comes the second hit, man. You're going to have a child. You're going to name him Jesus. He is the son of God. His kingdom will reign for all times. And I'm going to let you tell your uh, betrothed about this. That might be the third hit, in my opinion. Bam. Something changes. Now, in 2023... We as a world and as a nation, we fail our women a lot of the times. We do. We don't have to cross the ocean to find how women are judged or put in dangerous situations. We live in a nation where one out of four women in this country will suffer sexual violence and the narrative around that is, what was she wearing? What did she do to deserve it? Was she out late? And I got to tell you, with all the technology and all the opportunity, the education, the health care system we have, and we still do that. And if that's true, then this first century Jewish unmarried woman, a young woman, this is a collision moment with the holy that's not in her favor. God has found favor with you, Mary. Let's pray that the locals don't kill you for it. You know, if you're 2023 20, and we can't protect women, first century, man, let's just... Lock you away somewhere, you know? <sighs> Do not be afraid. Mm. Tall order, man. 40 weeks of pregnancy, and don't be afraid. Now, if you have a chance this week, look at all of Luke 1. Okay, It's not a long chapter. It's a page. Look at Luke 1. Her uncle, who is a high priest, a man with privilege and education, who gets to go into the most holy of holies of the temple, the Lord God appeared before him as an angel and said, your wife will have a child. And he said, nope. And the Lord <laughs> shut his mouth. Couldn't say anything till the baby was born. But Mary... In response, she says, may I be who you say that I am. And she sings. We all know her song. She sings about this divine being at a distance 
who watches all over all people, who knows when they do good or they do bad, that this being has several followers uh, with all male names, but we're assuming that they're female also, and he's this white guy with a beard, and his followers are Dasher and Donner and Vixen and Prancer. Wait, I can do better than that. There was Donner and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and I messed it up. <laughs> Wait a second. Dasher and Dancer and Prancer and Vixen, Comet and Cupid and I did it wrong again. But we won't have me do that a third time. We'll learn from the two. That's not the song. But we know that one, do we not? We know about Santa Claus who lives far, far away. He's this white guy with a white beard and a jolly belly. And he knows if you've been good or if you've been bad. He has these followers. And I got to tell you, I got a bone to pick with this big man. And you can fight with me afterwards. Rudolph, you know where I'm going with this. Rudolph is born looking a little different. He is. We can state the obvious. A little different. And everybody doesn't let him play a single reindeer game his entire life. Now, depending on the claymation movie or what, what canon you want to follow, they didn't like or need this reindeer until he had worth for them. I got a problem with that. I got a problem. But see, the thing is, is the story, and you can love Santa. Have your Santa moment tomorrow. Santa's coming to our house. But the thing is, is what we sing about Santa Claus that we all remember and know, and maybe not all of us know the reindeer name, but we know Santa. The thing is, is we assume that that's who our God is too. How many pictures of white Jesus have you seen? A few. Not saying it's bad art. It's not accurate. How many of us have been told that God is somebody far, far away in a magical place that you can't see, but he's there? How many have been taught that God is watching you? He knows when you've been bad. He knows your sins. How many of us have been told that to have a lot of money, to have good health, we call it a blessing of God. God has blessed me. We put hashtag blessed in our kitchens, right? Because, because what we get means that I've been good. And so the other hand is if something bad happens to you, the question is, is well, what did you do? You must have done something. But that's not Mary's song. And some of our moms read it this morning. It doesn't have a snazzy tune. But as you leave this morning, I, if anybody says, Mary, did you know? You can say, yes, she did, Luke 1. That's your answer. Yes. Don't even jump to Luke 2. Yes, she knew. Luke 1. And her song is something different. Her song is that the Son of God will come down and he will scatter the proud. He will tear down thrones. He will tear down governments that harm the oppressed. He will lift up the lowly. He will fill the hungry. He will throw out the rich. You can't really put jingle bells to that song, can you? Not an easy one to sell. But that is Mary's song. Her song in 2023 is, let's throw down the governments that don't care for people. People shouldn't have trillions and trillions of dollars. People shouldn't be taking a joyride to space when there are people starving under bridges. 
there shouldn't be corporations running our governments. There shouldn't be children in danger. There shouldn't be people on the outside of churches believing and being taught that God watches them and knows when they're bad and if something bad happens to them, it's because they were bad and they deserved it. Mary's song, it hits, man. So go back to that car accident with me. Here comes this beautiful doe right before the Chester exit. Not a light in sight. Here it comes. We hit it straight on. The seatbelt doesn't catch. I didn't go for another guy with a truck. I just married one with a white truck, but not a red truck, I learned. My head hits the dashboard, hits back. The front of the car is wrecked. We pull over, the deer is gone. Two teenagers, adrenaline <laughs> shock, not sure what to do. As we're standing there and I'm crying about the deer, fireworks start going off. And I say to him, I say, Daniel, I think, I think it's New Year's Eve. I, I, think, I think Happy New Year right now. There are people all over the world today who are colliding with hardship, who feel that they are lost on the side of the road. They don't know who to call. They don't know the way forward. They don't know how they're going to pick up the pieces. And the song that they need to hear this season, friends, is not Donner and Dasher. It's not a Santa who watches. They need to hear the real song of who Jesus is. That we don't have a God who lives in the North Pole or in heavens far away with a white silky beard who doesn't know what's going on. We have a God that chose to become flesh and live among people, to eat with people, to walk with people, to wash dirty feet, to heal blind eyes, to raise up women from oppression and give them a voice. We have a God that doesn't keep records of right and wrong because love is patient and it is kind and it does not keep record of wrongdoing. We have a God that when you mess up, the door is open. You don't have to wait 364 <coughs> days to get something good. We have a God that invites us to think of our world a little differently. to be a little more humble, to say when we're hit with collisions that I know that God is with me, that my worth is not based on what I make or do, that I have a chance to try again, that I might be able to say, may I be who you say I am, giggles and all. So friends, celebrate Santa. Have those good moments in the morning. And moms, maybe it doesn't feel like that at the moment. I've had that year before. <coughs> but maybe in this season, revisit what Mary says. What would it be like to sing the song of God and to be ready to sing it to those who desperately need to hear it? Amen. May we have the joy of Levi as we stand and sing together. <laughs>
hope to see you this evening at 5 for our worship um, as we celebrate Holy Communion. Receive these words of blessings. May the God who seeks to be with you, who tears down the wicked and raises up the lowly, may his song be in your heart this season. May you sing it. Amen. Amen. Merry Christmas.